Good morning, it's now day four, Monday, and uh, we've left Namsh Bazaar. We've got another morning of fabulous sunshine and clear views, and we're heading up the valley. We're now at the first stupa, which is a memorial to Sherpa Tenzing and all the Sherpas up here. Uh, it's part of the 50th anniversary of Sunday Everest, and you can see down the valley below where we've come from, hopefully. We've got up fairly early and got ahead of some of the crowds. Um, we're now going to head up the valley. Every time we go around a spur, we end up seemingly getting closer to these massive mountains at the end. We've still got at least another nine days of this trek left. So make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, if you want to follow our progress over the next week or more. We've been walking at Allison's pace for exactly two hours now and we're at Kanjuma. Uh, it's a real good place to stop here in this sunshine because all the cafes here have got this fantastic view up the valley of Amadablan up there. We're at 3,600 meters here and we're going to carry on walking to Funky Tengu to get our lunch before we start the big ascent of the day. Really refreshing up here just to get a quick bit of a sploosh over because I'm not paying for showers at the hotel which are five dollars. Mind you I might smell fresh but I think my t-shirt's still pretty high. Well it's good news it's 11 o'clock and it's taken us three and a half hours here to get to Funky Thenga and we're at the Evergreen Lodge at the bottom of the steps. You can see over there there's a, a suspension bridge which we're going to be crossing next. So we're going to have some food here. So this is our lunch. And Andy's gone for Tibetan bread with omelette, which is fried in oil, I think. And I've gone for a chapati with omelette. And then we've got a definite, at least a two hour climb up the big zigzags that we saw earlier. We've been going for just over an hour now since lunchtime and we're up to about 3,600 meters now. It's been constant climb up steps with no downhill I can remember really. How's it going Alison? Slow. See behind us, that was where we went this morning about 11 o'clock over there so we're above that level now. We had our lunch way down in that valley by the river We've actually been going an hour and a half now, um, actually an hour and three quarters at this point. So, uh, I don't know, we can't be that far away from the summit. Let's, let's see, let's hop, hop up there, baby, come on. <laughs> you either get a big smile or a smack in the mouth from her. <laughs> I, I feel yeah, maybe well, smack in the mouth. I think the smack is probably more in order. Before we get some more boys. <laughs> Oh, we've got awesome room at Tengboshe guest house. 500 a night. Oh, good. Nice up here, isn't it? <laughs> really feels quite high, doesn't it? So this is it, Tengboshe. Oh, to come all the way up here, it's just an amazing to have a cafe like this to get some cake and coffee, real coffee machine, apple pie. It's easy to be all the way up here and have all this luxury food. Well, Monday evening finished really nicely with a satisfying meal around a wood burner as usual in a friendly environment in the dining room. There's been a frost overnight and uh, woken up to a lovely, clear, sunny morning again. But our adventure's really starting today because as you'll see, most people are heading off down that hill towards Everest Base Camp. We're actually gonna branch off here towards the north down a different valley, which the pass is so small it's not marked on our map. Uh, but we have read that it's possible, uh, but we don't really know too many details about navigation and stuff, so uh, anything could happen today. <laughs> I think it's going to be okay, but we don't really know how far we're going to get. Um, but if anybody wants to follow this trail, it's really easy to find. If it works out for us, that is. You just go to the left of the monastery and then down a little track. There's a um, 
house on the right which has been ruined by the earthquake. And on the left hand side there's the Trekkers Lodge which has fallen into disrepair and isn't occupied anywhere. Carry on past that, past the little temple place down the hill I hope. So where are we going we'll to see. go then? Uh, first we're going to Fort Say and then maybe Thor or Thar depending on how far we get. So let's see. see what happens. Well things have already gone a little bit to shit because this path, we're following the path but it is so steep here it's like coming down worse than the Rinogs really. Alison can't take her pack so I'm having to do shuttles with the packs and all this heathery bilberry whatever it is stuff means you can't even see where the pack's been left. So fortunately the path has now broadened out and we're kind of still going down but we're contouring around this spur we started off about half past seven and it's now nearly half past eight we come to this uh, little shrine we're going to get some tan lotion and sunglasses on and things and we're now starting to be glad that we have chosen this route because we really feel like we're out on our own now and doing this properly right everybody this has gone all wrong Remember when we went to that Trekkers Lodge sign and went to the left of it, behind the Trekkers Lodge, to the left of that building that got damaged in the earthquake? Don't do that. We went down the hill for about an hour, found out we're travelling west, realised we were going to end up at Funky Tenga. And actually, what you do, you don't go left of that Trekkers sign, you go to the right of these two buildings. There's no path hardly, but you hug close to the west of the monastery, go down here, in about 10 meters, in the trees, you see this little sign, way to Fort Say. Bloody hell. We went down about nearly 200 meters the wrong way. Don't go past the heliport or the memorial. There's another little sign here. Way to Fort C. Wish we'd found that last night before we set out this morning. Anyway, it's, it's an adventure. Here's the correct path. It's really nice going down through the woodland. Very autumnal today. Alison picked her way down here in about 45 minutes and we've never been so glad to see a bridge, but that river is a torrent. We started off from the bridge down there at 10.30. It's now 11.45 and I must admit, I think if Alison had known that this path was as hairy as this, we might not have come this way. It's mega steep down there. We're at 3,800 meters and there's nobody around. This is looking back on the path that we've just come up. There's a really big drop right on the side of it and we're now just approaching the spur where we're going to turn right to the village. View to the south there is fabulous. Alison's just up ahead now. I didn't want to film her coming up here, it was too much. So this is where we reach the end of the spur really and this is going to take us round to the village. I think the crisis is over. So this is Fort Zay. Now I need to find somewhere for lunch and ascertain how long it is to walk to the next place where we can have some accommodation tonight. So that's it, Tuesday, end of day five. We nearly got run over by a helicopter. We went the wrong way. Came back up, we went the right way. We nearly got run over by a yak. It was very steep and very horrible, and I had a little cry. And then we came here to Fort Say, which is pretty. We had a really nice afternoon. And now I'm snuggled up like a mouse.